شباب المرحلة الثانية السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته اليوم محاضرتنا عن الأناتومي of the mouth the mouth or another name the oral cavity this oral cavity extends from the lips anteriorly to the pharynx posteriorly here the line of division in between the oral cavity of and the pharynx is the oropharyngeal isthmus oropharyngeal isthmus this is formed on each side by the palatoglossal fold that is the chrome muhadara sabqa there are two fold the anterior one is the palatoglossal fold and the posterior one is the palatopharyngeal fold that surround the palatine tonsils here the palato glossal fold the anterior one is the what we call the oropharyngeal isthmus and it had the fossil in between the oral cavity and the pharynx palato glossal fold so this is the oral cavity extending in between the lips and the oropharyngeal isthmus the mouth or oral cavity can be divided or it's division divisions first the vestibule this is a slit like space in between the lips and teeth and the mouth cavity proper mouth cavity proper the vestibule this is the vestibule here this is in the green color vestibule this is a slit like space extending in between the lips and cheeks يعني تمتد ما بين الشفاه والخد to the teeth and gum take a stand in between the lips and cheeks to the teeth and gum it is a slit like space this vestibule as we said it have يعني it have bounded by the lips and the cheeks the cheeks are formed by this muscle which is called the boxinator muscle the boxinator muscle is supplied by facial nerve this is space smaller space in between the cheek and the teeth is called the vestibule this vestibule communicate anteriorly through oral opening and oral fissure with the exterior and uh, posteriorly behind the third molar tooth with the mouth cavity proper يعني راح تكون الاتصال ويا الخارج through the oral fissure ومع بالداخل مع ال oral cavity proper behind the third molar tooth the mouth proper the mouth proper this extend in between the teeth and the gum to the oropharyngeal isthmus it have a roof and it have floor as we can see here the roof of mouth proper is formed by the palate hard palate and soft palate and the floor is formed by the tongue anterior to third of the tongue and the mucous membrane reflected on the under surface of the tongue to the floor of the mandible the mouth proper roof its roof is formed by the hard palate in front and the soft palate behind the floor is, its anterior two third is formed by the tongue and the mucous membrane from the side of the tongue to the gum uh, of the mandible this is the tongue anterior to third of the tongue and the reflection of the mucous membrane to the gum of the mandible here on the under surface يعني على الجزء السفلي من اللسان on the under surface of the tongue this is the inferior surface of the tongue here we can see a fold of a mucous membrane at the midline it will connect the under surface of the tongue in the midline to the floor of the mouth this is called the frenulum, frenulum of the tongue. 
frenulum of the tongue. This is a fold of mucous membrane connects the under surface of the tongue in the midline to the floor of the mouth. The submandibular duct on both sides of this frenulum. Here we can see there is a papilla, and the, in this papilla we have the opening of the submandibular duct gland. The submandibular duct of the submandibular gland opens into the floor of the mouth on the summit of a small papilla on either side, on either side of the frenulum of the tongue. هذه فتحت هذه الغدة اللعابية راح تكون on both sides of the frenulum of the tongue. Here we can see this is the parotid salivary gland, this is the submandibular and the sublingual gland. All these glands will open their duct inside the oral cavity and then the parotid gland will open into the vestibule of the mouth. Again, it's the upper second molar tooth in the vestibule of the mouth. Again, a submandibular gland duct will open on both sides of the frenulum of the tongue. To a sublingual fold, the sublingual gland with the small opening on the floor of the mouth. What is the sensory innervation of the mouth to the roof that is formed by the hard and soft palate? It is supplied by branches of the maxillary nerve, the greater palatine and the nasopalatine nerves. These are branches from the maxillary division of the trigeminal nerve. To the floor of the mouth, the lingual nerve is for common sensation. Common sensation means that pain with temperature will touch. Lingual nerve is a branch of the mandib mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve. With the same nerve, يعني نفس the lingual nerve يحمل لي fiber اللي هي taste fiber travel in the corda tympani nerve. يعني أكو جزء من the lingual nerve نسميه the corda tympani nerve, which is a branch of the facial nerve. هذا the corda tympani nerve it is concerned with the taste fiber. يعني اللي بي هو عصب التذوق عصب التذوق. The cheeks will be covered by the buccal nerve. The buccal nerve is a branch of the mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve. As we said previously, the buccinated muscle, regarded as one of the muscles of facial expression, it is innervated by the buccal branch of the facial nerve. And then in general, the sensory innervation of the mouth is supplied by branches of the trigeminal nerve, which is maxillary and mandibular. This is the picture that this part, which we will say, the roof of the oral cavity is supplied by branches of the maxillary nerve. The incisive nasopalatine and the greater palatine nerve. Well, cheeks, uh, cheeks, will floor of the mouth supplied by branches of the mandibular nerve. So, this is the uh, roof of the oral cavity or roof of the mouth sensor innervation of the mouth is supplied by the nasopalatine nerve and the greater palatine nerve both of these nerves are branches of the maxillary nerve and the cheeks and the floor of the mouth is supplied by the lingual nerve lingual nerve and the uh, buccal nerve both of these nerves are branches of the mandibular division of trigeminal nerve Now we come to the another item which is the tongue. The tongue is a mass of striated muscle or skeletal muscle that is covered with a mucous membrane. It is divided into right and left half by a median fibrous septum. We can see in this figure this is the uh, this is the tongue it is a mass of striated or skeletal muscle it consists of from two halves they are connected in the midline by a median fibrous septum the tongue can be divided into anterior two thirds which is called the body of the tongue and the posterior one third which is called the base or the root of the tongue the tongue can be divided by a v-shaped sulcus called Sulcus terminalis, this is a V-shaped sulcus terminalis, into anterior two-thirds and the posterior 
one third. Uh, the interior two thirds contain uh, these villi, different type of villi, but the posterior one third is devoid of these villi. Instead, it have a collection of lymphoid tissue that is called the lingual tonsils. Here we can see this is the V-shaped uh, sulcus or terminal sulcus of the tongue or sulcus limitans. At its top of the V, there is a small pit that is called foramen cecum of the tongue. And this sulcus limitans will divide the tongue into anterior two thirds and a posterior one third. And here we can see that the anterior two thirds uh, covered with the papillae, while the posterior one third is covered with the longual tonsils. The tongue is attached to, superiorly is attached superiorly to the styloid process and to the soft palate by the styloglossus muscle and by the palatoglossal muscles. And below it is attached uh, to the mandible through genioglossus muscle and to the hyoid bone through hyoglossus muscle. So it have a upper attachment and it have a lower attachment. Above it's attached to the styloid process and soft palate and below it is attached to the mandible and the hyoid bone. The muscle, muscle of the tongue can be divided into two types, the intrinsic and the extrinsic. Intrinsic muscle that form the substance of the tongue. Intrinsic tongue muscle is formed by longitudinally oriented muscle, longitudinal muscle, and we have transverse muscle, and we have vertical, vertical muscle. These muscle uh, it will form the substance of the tongue and it is uh, responsible for the changing the shape of the uh, tongue and yani during movement of the tongue to change the shape of the tongue. They are supplied by the hypoglossal nerve. The extrinsic tongue muscle is the genioglossus, the hyoglossus, styloglossus, styloglossus uh, and the palatoglossus, palatoglossus. These are extrinsic tongue muscle, extrinsic tongue muscle also, they are supplied by the hypoglossal nerve. So what is the blood supply to the tongue? The main blood supply is through lingual artery, which is a branch of the external carotid artery. Another branch is that comes from the tonsillar branch of the facial artery, and the third is from the ascending pharyngeal artery. All these arteries are branches from the external carotid artery. What is the lymphatic drainage of the tongue? Nana lymphatic drainage according to the region. At the tip of the tongue, it will be drained to the submental node that lie in the submental triangle of the neck. In the sides of the anterior two thirds, Hadi, sides of the anterior two thirds of the tongue, it will be drained to the submandibular and the deep cervical lymph node. And then we'll be there, at the tip, the submental lymph node side of the anterior two thirds to the submandibular and the deep cervical lymph node where the posterior one posterior one-third, this is in the green color, will be drained to the deep cervical nodes, deep cervical nodes. What is the nerve supply of the tongue? It is important. It have two types of nerve supply. One this is for the uh, sensory and the another is the motor. The motor supply is through hypoglossal nerve, the 12 cranial nerve, to supply all the muscle of the tongue for the movement. And the sensory nerve supply is through a lingual nerve. A lingual nerve it will provide sensory supply to a general sensation or special sensation. Sensory innervation of the tongue, the anterior to third through lingual nerve. Lingual nerve is a branch of the mandibular division of trigeminal nerve, the general sensation. With the lingual nerve, we have uh, another nerve called corda tympani, which is a branch of the facial nerve that is responsible for the taste. Yani, the posterior one third, the posterior one third is supplied by the glossopharyngeal nerve, the ninth cranial nerve. Other for uh, the same nerve for the general sensation, yani pain, touch, and temperature sensation. 
and the tastes. Yani glossopharyngeal nerve, it will contain both fiber for general sensation and for the taste. قاعد نشوف هذا المخطط انه قاعد يحدد لي انه هذا السنسوري انرفيشن اوف ذا تونغ اكو عندي جزء يعني التيست واكو عندي سوماتيك سنسيشن تيست يعني يعني تذوق تذوق الاطعمه والسوماتيك سنسيشن جنرال سنسيشن يعني فور ذا بين تمبرتشر اند تاتش يعني احساس بالالم والحراره واللمس هنا عندنا السوماتيك سنسيشن او الجنرال سنسيشن انتيرا تو ثيرد ثرو ذا لينجوال نيرف لينجوال نيرف اللي هو برانش من مانديبولار نيرف والبوستيرا ومن ثيرد قلنا ثرو جلوسوفارنجيال نيرف التيست عندنا البوستيرا ومن ثيرد ثرو جلوسوفارنجيال نيرف وقلنا الانتيرا تو ثيرد ثرو كوردا تيمباني اللي هو برانش اوف فاشيال نيرف اذا نجي لهنا للجلوسو ابيجلوتيك فولد او فوسا والفاليكولا Valicular and this region supplied by the vagus nerve. هذا في المخطط الثاني وضح لنا sensory innervation. The motor nerve. إحنا منتهي من عندنا the motor nerve is through hypoglossal nerve. The sensory innervation. مثل ما قلنا عندنا the anterior to third through lingual nerve. The general sensation, the cord that impedes the special sense, the posterior one third through glossopharyngeal nerve, the general and special sense. What are the movements that are are possible of the tongue? At now, she protrusion means the movement of the tongue anteriorly forward protrusion. It is for, يعني it is done by the genioglossus. Genioglossus muscle on both side acting together. Genioglossus. Retraction it means movement backward. حركة اللسان إلى الخلف. It is done by the styloglossus and the hyoglossus muscle on both side acting together. Depression it means movement downward. It is done by hyoglossus muscle on both side acting together. Retraction and elevation. يعني حركة إلى الخلف وارتفاع مع الارتفاع. Retraction and elevation of the posterior third by the styloglossus and palatoglossus muscle on both sides acting together. وعدنا أخيرا the shape changes as we said before. تغيير الشكل is by the intrinsic muscles. يعني هي longitudinal and transverse and horizontal. Now we come to another uh, item, which is the palate. The palate, as we can see here, this is the uh, palate, which form the roof of the um, oral cavity proper and the uh, floor of the nasal cavity. It is formed anteriorly by the hard palate and posteriorly by the soft palate. Uh, here we can see this is the palate forming the roof of the oral cavity. As we said, anteriorly it is formed by a bone, and posteriorly it is formed by soft tissue. Anteriorly hard palate, and posteriorly soft palate. This is the hard palate formed by the bone, and attached to its posterior end is the soft palate. The hard palate here we can see it is formed by the palatine process of the maxilla, anteriorly. Posteriorly it is formed by the horizontal plates of the palatine bone. It is continuous behind, يعني نانا continuous behind with the أحد كامل عندنا soft palate. The soft palate here, this is this part that's attached to the posterior end of the hard palate. This is the soft palate. It is a mobile fold. هذا هي soft palate. Mobile fold attached to the posterior border of the hard palate. It is a free. It's a free posterior border present in the midline. A conical projection. هذا النتوء اللي هو شكله مخروطي. We will call it the uvula. From the free posterior border of the soft palate, we have this conical projection that is called uvula. The soft palate is continuous at the side, على الجوانب, with the pharynx, with the pharyngeal wall. How? This is the conical shape projection of the posterior border of the soft palate, which is called the uvula, and the soft palate is continuous on the side with the pharyngeal wall through the palatoglossal fold and the palatopharyngeal fold. This is the uvula in the midline. These are the 
Palatoglossal and palatopharyngeal uh, arches or fold are they are يعني, connecting in between, connecting in between the soft palate and the pharyngeal wall. What are the muscles of the soft palate? يعني, how the soft palate can move, يعني, moving up or down? It have certain muscle. The most important of these muscles is the tensor villi palatini. This one from its origin. Then it will uh, arch over, arch over the hamulus of the pterygoid process. This is the hamulus of the pterygoid process. And you see how this muscle is tensor villi palatini is attached to this uh, bony projection, which is the hamulus of the pterygoid process. To go to form the aponeurosis of the soft palate. This muscle is called tensor villi palatini. Another muscle, uh, tensor villi palatini, it will cause it will causes the soft palate to become tense. And it will shed the soft palate. Another muscle, which is the levator villi palatini, that it will elevate the uh, soft palate. Another muscle is called the palatoglossus muscle, palatoglossus muscle to the tongue. And from the palate to the tongue, palatoglossus muscle, and the another one is the palatopharyngeus muscle, from the palate to the pharyngeal wall, and the in the midline we have uh, the muscle that form the uvula called musculus uvuli, that form the conical shape projection from the posterior end of the uh, soft palate that's called musculus uvuli. What is the nerve supply of the palate? It is supplied by branches from the uh, branches from the maxillary nerve these are the greater palatine nerve and the nasopalatine nerve branches of maxillary division what is the blood supply of the palate also it's through the uh, greater palatine uh, artery greater palatine artery mainly also it is a branch of the maxillary artery Thank you.